I'm too far out there. Oh, look at that right there. It didn't take very long to start chumming and to see some tuna. I mean, when we first got there, we start seeing them busting behind other people's boats. Yeah, baby, doubled up. That's awesome. These are big ones, dude. It was incredible. I mean, we, we had a flurry going there for a while where we're doubled, tripled, as many as we wanted to hook, just throwing bait in the water to watch them pop. <laughs> Woo. Mama's going to be happy with sushi tonight. Yeah! Come on, come on. Oh, he ate it. He ate it. He ate it. Nice, baby. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. I thought you said you had to. I got him. Relax. Oh, dude, he just ripped my boat off. Oh. Awesome. Look at that big boy. The Hawks K Saltwater Experience, presented by Yellowfin, with Captain Tom Rowland and Captain Rich Tudor. So, you know, something we haven't done in a long time is go out there and catch these uh, blackfin tunas. You know, one of the secrets is we've got to have the bait. They seem to show up in the, in the fall here, um, but the secret to it is we have to have a lot of the pilchards to really get them fired up on the surface. And the fun thing is we just got this new 26, and it's perfect because it's, it's really big enough to comfortably run offshore and do this, um, but it's also small enough and shallow enough draft to where we can get up and, and catch the bait up in, in the shallow flats, which is where I'm most comfortable catching the pilchards. A lot of the offshore guys here actually go out to the reef and catch them out in you know, 20, 30 feet of water, but that's just kind of a different game. You have to have sand, sand balls um, here on the inshore side where we used to catch them. Um, really, you have to have a shallow draft boat. I think uh, we'll go catch, try and catch these pilchards first thing and then uh... If we get those, we can probably try the tunas early. And um, we're getting marking that boat right there. That's good, because yeah, it works. Running out in the dark, we'd have been worried about that. It gives you a lot of confidence leaving early. I don't know what kind of boat that is. I don't know. Some sort of work boat. Never been there before, so I mean, that's, you never know what'll be out here. Mark it right there. That's clearly that, that same vessel right there. A lot of times when I run back from tarpon fishing at night, man, all these sailboats and things out there, they just, you know, no lights on. Guys with their little skiffs out there fishing and of course staying to that last light, that's when they bite, but then you gotta ride home in the dark, a little sketchy. Let's go catch that, uh, catch some pilchers right up here. And if we get those, I think we can get these uh, black tunas on the, on the uh, humps out there. They've been uh, getting them pretty good. Could be super fun. Have a little sushi. And that boat is is definitely plenty shallow to go catch the bait. And it's probably, it's, I mean, there's there's lots of situations we can catch bonefish and permit in that boat. Um, and then when we put the trolling motor on the bow, that really helps with the bait catching, but it also helps with the maneuverability, uh, making that really one of the most versatile boats that we have. Looks like they're here. Yeah. We left Hawks Cay and ran down the beach there towards Marathon looking for the pilchards. Um, you know, saw an area where the pelicans were diving, birds were, were, were working. And, uh, you know, what was cool there is, you know, literally it was so calm that morning. You know, you could pick up the binoculars. I looked around and I could see way up in there, I could see the sprinkling. You know, that was the, the pilchards. The, the birds were actually diving on something else over here, maybe mullet or something. But the, uh, clearly see that sprinkling, just the, you know, all those little pilchards up there just, just dipping on the surface. And, and uh, man, that was when we knew we, were, we, had, we had what we were looking for. There they are, way up in there. Head towards that sign right there and then we'll troll motor in. Yeah, well, we got in there and they were, they were in there all right. I mean, you could just see them not only sprinkling, but you could see them just flashing, like just like these little flashes, kind of like pinfish do, but it was just the pilchards, just, just like, just flashing. But everywhere, all around us, they were just flashing. There were so many, and the bait was so happy in there that it wasn't like these, you know, the schools pushing through. It was like all down in the grass and just, just super happy. Um, so it didn't take long to, to catch all the bait we needed. Here we go. Sir, that's what we wanted. Oh yeah. Oh, we got a bunch here. 
man, what a great boat that 26 is because, man, we just got that bait so easily, no problem. I mean, not even close to being a depth issue. And get up in there with uh, some other flats fishermen and skiffs, we're up in there. We do that no problem. And then, and then have right enough out. capacity to hold a ton, you know, the big, big wells, yeah. multiple wells. I love having the floor well where we're able to dump it in the floor as we're catching the bait, just scoop anything that falls right into the hatch. And then as, after you get done with that, you can pick them up and put them in the top well. There we go. Yeah, I catch a couple fish. All right, we should be done with this one. Done. Time to go catch the big fishies. It's nice when bait's plentiful. Yeah, baby, doubled up. That's awesome, these are big ones, dude. Sweet. The Hawks K Saltwater Experience, presented by Yellowfin, is brought to you in part by Hawks K Resort. Find what lures you. Lawrence, America's number one fish finder. B&W Trailer Hitches, towing adventure. Mercury Marine, go boldly. St. Croix Rods, the best rods on earth. Waypoint, and by Ameritrail. Daiwa. Marathon, Power Pull, and Vibe. So the secret to the tunas and the bait is getting up super early and uh, getting out there before the other boats. You know, low light for the tunas, and then you gotta get the first guy to the bait spot to catch them quick. You know, so this is a great opportunity for us to, you know, leave in the dark, we got up early, we were able to you know, get the boat loaded up and roll while it was still dark out. Had the radar to be able to turn on the radar and just kind of um, you know, make sure we're safe as we're running out there. I always worry about running around um, in the dark. It's nice to have the radar, a little uh, sense of security, and then also check the radar for storms, you know, making sure there's no storms way offshore as we're, as we're out there. And we used that. Definitely got the radar going, and, and we, we lucked into a really nice day. We didn't have to worry about storms so much on this day because, man, it was slick calm and a uh, nice day to be out. The water was purple. It was so blue, it was purple, and it was just gorgeous out there. I got a request from my lovely wife to bring home some tuna for dinner, so. Oh yeah? I'm trying to make that happen. All right, so we're gonna run right over here to this spot where all this cluster of boats is and make a drift or two, see if we get these tunas going. Cool, let's go check it out. Yeah. Beautiful day offshore here. Yeah, it is. Nice and calm, the water's beautiful. These tuna are looking for some sort of upwelling in the ocean. Like down in Key West, there's, there's a real famous spot, it's the sub, and it's a sunken submarine down there. And that really draws these fish to it. Up here, you'll have these natural areas where it's like a hump. Like there'll be a big one, like the Isla Mirada hump or the Marathon hump. Those are like real community spots. But then there's some smaller ones. And you took us to one of the smaller lesser known ones with, with a little bit less of a crowd. Yeah, this is, you know, especially this time of year um, in the fall, it becomes, uh, that's a good spot. You know, there's usually, there's always some tunas there. There's always some, you know, like these smaller, you know, five pound type tunas in there. But this time of year, the, you know, the bigger ones start showing up and you'll get the, the small ones mixed in with some mediums and, and, and then some of the bigger ones up to 20 pounds. All right, they're close right here, really close. Right here behind us. And they're right behind us. It didn't take very long to start chumming and to see some tuna. I mean, when we first got there, we start seeing them busting behind other people's boats. So we know that they're there. We have the confidence to, to do that. And it's a matter of just finding some on our own and getting them to come to our boat and then chumming enough to, to keep them there. There he is, right rod, right rod, you got him. There you go. That's what we're looking for. Nice job, he's gonna make it a double. Throw a couple more baits out there. We ought to be able to get these right here behind us. They're right, really close. These guys are coming to your rod. That oh, a, that's a giant that a one. one. You see that one? 
but you know everybody's throwing out a few scoops and, and the tunas are starting to bust and jump and that's the exciting part to me is watching them explode watching them skyrocket out of the water and knowing that you know all right get a little closer a little closer you know and you're always hoping they'll come right behind the boat as you're throwing that bait out they're gonna get us right here we need more baits out here we go got one yeah baby doubled up that's awesome these are big ones dude Sweet. Want me to try for the triple? Yeah, absolutely. Mine's too close to the boat to put it in the rod holder, I think. I'm putting mine in the holder right there behind you. <laughs> but most of the people are drifting across that hump. And so if a boat has a lot of bait, it might pick up the tuna here and start catching them and keep chumming and keep chumming and drift away and the tuna will stay with that boat in that chum line and eat. So they could be catching fish well off of the hump. Yep. What we wanted to do was just, just pick up some, any, you know, tuna and, and get them start eating our chum and then, you know, be able to catch them pretty good. <laughs> this is awesome. That's a good run. Look at the size of this guy. I think he's getting chased by a shark. Watch out, he's all over my line. Nice. Look at that big tuna. It's a good one. Yeah. Oh boy. <laughs> that is awesome. Self netting. Woo! Mama's gonna be happy with sushi tonight. That's what I'm talking about. That's a nice tuna, dude. That is awesome. You probably got one that's even bigger. I saw some giants coming up. Yeah, man. It's been a long work. Been a while since we caught a tuna. Nice. Very cool. They came in right behind us just like they're supposed to. Yeah. My favorite part of the day was the fact that we did something we've never done before. We got to use this 26 with the trolling motor out there. I've been talking about it, I've been thinking about it, I've been watching how we were able to anchor, you know, at a bridge or a channel or whatever, and I'm thinking, you know, wow, if we could get out there on, on these humps when the tuners are happening and just get up ahead of where the fish are, and instead of drifting through it three, four miles an hour with that Gulf Stream, I mean, because you're kind of there and over, and then you got to run back and do it again. And I have seen guys in the past try to anchor like at the Isle of Hump or whatever, but it's a nightmare. I mean, it's just not worth the reward. But man, to get out there and push a button and anchor just the same as we could in, in, in f 10 feet of water mm -hmm. um, out there in 800, this was incredible. And we finally did that after, after we'd made a drift or two. I was like, you know, let's, let's, let's see what happens. And we stopped the boat threw out some chum, and sure enough, man, right behind the boat. I'm too far out there. Oh, look at that right there. That's incredible. We had them frenzied up to where they were right behind the motor. Yeah. I mean, you could have hand fed them. It was so cool. Got him right here. Got him too. Doubled up. That's incredible, dude. <laughs> How about that? How about that? I got a little one, I think. See you later. And they are right on our transom. Right on our transom. We can catch them on fly right here. We didn't bring a fly rod. I started looking all around the boat for a fly rod because that was that was the, the, the best situation. They were they were so close. I mean, you could have caught them on fly and had never fly fished before. They were literally 15 feet behind the boat. But that's what it was all about, is that we were stopped. So they're following that chum line right up and they 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 hit the back of the boat. And then if you keep feeding, they stay there. So that's, you know, with a trolling motor, it's great. Oh yeah, and then even if we had taken the time to anchor, well, that's great until the fish also, you know, there's a hundred of them busting over here and you're like, man, I'm not gonna pull my anchor, you know? Cause it's just too much work. I mean, we literally just, you know, oh, there's some busting, let's just move over there. And it was just simple and easy. I want to get one more just like this. Ready? So this is a pretty cool spot. This is a, one of the smaller humps. It comes up to right at 400 feet. Seven, eight hundred around it. This is some good fishing. 
How cool is that on the anchor, huh? It's really good. I've always wanted to do this. And I like it where they're directly on the transom. I mean, seriously. I know. They were three feet from the transom. Look at them. Yeah, they're, they're right here boiling behind the boat. This is incredible. The blackfin tuna is an awesome fish, man. They are really beautiful. They catch a ton of them down in Key West, both on the Atlantic side, like we're on here, yep. but also in the Gulf of Mexico. They say the Gulf of Mexico fish don't taste as good as the ones that they catch really? on the Atlantic. Yeah. And so, I mean, these these fish out here. A lot of people say they're the, they're the you know best eating tunas. I've heard guys you know you know yellowfin, bluefin, this that, um, but here the blackfins are the are the are the tuna. Oh boy, big shark right here. I can see him in the water. I better get this tuna up. Wow, he's right here. This is cool. He's gonna come after this tuna. Great white. Look at, look at him. Look at him. There's two of them, two of them. Another tuna on. Look at these sharks right here. Giant sharks. You better get that tuna. Look at him. Oh my gosh, he's big. That might be a tiger right there. Hey, can you get this one, Tom? Yep. The shark's after him. Oh my gosh. And right off our transom again. Mm. That's a good one. Better work him with the shark. <laughs> one of the sharks looks so big, I'm not so sure it wasn't a tiger. Well, he's slow. Hopefully it is a tiger. Wow. This is some good fishing. Oh. He got it. Huh? Might have gotten him. It's not a bad one. Football size. Oh, that's cool. So we just got our new Yellowfin 26 and it is fully rigged out with a Lowrance Electronics package. The thing that I'm most excited about with the electronics this year is I got the new Lowrance Halo 24 radar. This is a super compact radar in a 24 inch dome and it just has some awesome features. Um, one, it's twice as strong as any radar I've ever used on, on my inshore boats. It's got a 48 mile range so I can see a, a storm or boats just way out away from me and make good decisions. And then the thing that I use the radar the most for here in the Keys is, is running at night or early in the morning when we leave in the dark. I want to get out there early in the morning to beat the, beat the crowds and get out there when the fishing's really good. Um, so leaving in the dark is, is, is a big advantage. But it's also really scary running in the dark. You know, I'm, I'm worried I'm going to hit a channel marker, hit another boat out there. A lot of times there's boats out there without lights on them, so it's, it's, it's a little sketchy, especially when I'm running through crowded areas coming back from tarpon fish at night. That's where I really like the radar. And the feature that's, that's most useful with this new Halo 24 is that it has this velocity track feature. And this allows me to tell the difference. When I see a mark there that's a boat, it shows me if that boat is actually moving towards me or moving away by, by showing up in a different color. Um, it does this automatically so that I can have multiple boats out there and I can see the ones that are moving towards me or away from me. This is an incredible safety feature because not only you know, do you know that there's a boat there, but you know the direction it's going and it allows you to you know, quickly make a smart decision. So safety is the number one thing for me running in the dark and this Halo 24 really allows me to feel safer and stay out there later at night. The Hawks K Saltwater Experience, presented by Yellowfin, is brought to you by Yellowfin, only in a Yellowfin. Hook. Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's, your adventure starts here. Florida Marine Tracks, clarity in navigation. Buff for the ultimate sun. And by Motor Guide. Nikon. Wiley X. Lithium Pros, and Bernouin Rod Holders. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching the show. You know, we'd like to get to know you better, carry on the conversation, and the best way to do that is follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. There Fish he is. on. Nice job. Double. Yeah. All right, see if you, see if you can get theirs in first. Oh, really? <laughs> he likes that challenge. 
Oh, I just got eaten. Oh, I just pulled the hook. All right, guess you win. Not yet. Want a net for him? Nope. Nice job. It was incredible. I mean, we, we had a flurry going there for a while where we we're doubled, tripled, as many as we wanted to hook, just throwing bait in the water to watch them pop. And then it was so cool too, the sharks started following them up. You could see these big brown logs right under the boat, you know? I think we were kind of having a race to see who could get their tuna in fast enough so the shark didn't get them. And that's always when you kind of need to be thinking like, if they're all getting eaten by sharks, it's time to move. Then it's also, you know, how many are we gonna eat? And when you get those, it's probably time to go and you had orders from home to bring back some tuna, so we got enough for your family, and man, I had an awesome day. It was phenomenal to get out there and just mess around with that trolling motor and the 26, and just to see those tuna busting in beautiful purple water. It was just, couldn't have had a better day. Well, the name of the game here is bait, and we're out. Yeah, well, it was fun while it lasted. We had them busting, going crazy. Heck, one morning, that was incredible. I love having the uh, versatility to go catch the bait in this boat and then run out and do this. And that trolling motor, man, what a. You didn't have to pull the anchor once. No. Could have been your CrossFit workout for the man, day. Man, you get yourself killed doing it out here. Well, there is a, there is a technique to doing it. <laughs> but that's a lot easier. <laughs> a lot.